Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Garrett the Cage, and welcome back to Judgment on the PS4. Last episode, we met up with Mafio at Bartender, and had a protector for us, some street, I'm, we're going to assume, ministry thugs, because she's actually heading to the park to go pick up a case file on Morta, uh, the, the chief prosecutor, if I remember, remember right. And yeah, we had to protect her to get all the way over here, so let's go give our dirty detective uh, a little chat to. Uzawa-san, yes? Yep, that's me. Huh? Huh? Oh, you're the detective from before. Oh shit, Yagami. You used to be on the force? How'd you end up so scruffy? I gotta ask you the same thing. Y you two know each other? Why'd you bring these chatterheads along? Well, uh, Yagami-kun, he's... He's sort of my boyfriend. What? Since when? It's not <laughs> and why are you blushing? It's comedy hour over here. So, what do we have in the case? Ten years ago, Chief Prosecutor Morita's older brother strangled their mom to death. But... Why? A caretaker murder. Their mother was over 70 at the time, afflicted with a severe case of Alzheimer's. And they were taking care of her. Oh. It's hard to say what a dementia patient will do if you take your eye off them, even for a second. She apparently used to leave the stove on after she cooked or wander out in the middle of the night. None of the homes had any openings for her either. Ultimately, Morita's brother took care of their mom by himself. Seems he put the burden entirely on his own back. He quit his job and moved in with their mother, all to ensure Morita was free to do his duty as chief prosecutor. He barely took breaks, barely slept, for seven whole years before the incident. All he got from his mother in return was abuse. Verbal and sometimes physical. The hell'd she do that for? It's a side effect of dementia, though not all patients exhibit it. Some cases can be suppressed, but it doesn't always work out. At the time of the incident, Morita's brother was in the midst of a serious mental breakdown. I had to guess he'd probably been about to break for months. And the result is him murdering his own mother. Whatever became of him after all that? Ah, uh, well, not long afterward, he tried to hang himself and failed. So they suspended his sentence until he was more stable. And where is he now? It says here he died a year later. By his own hand. Dude. After everything his brother did, Morita was removed from the spotlight for a while. But it seems that's all in the past now. Everyone recognizes him as an unquestionable leader on the Force. So then, Morita blames Alzheimer's for all the suffering his family faced. Most likely, yes. The tragedy could have been prevented if only 89 had existed at the time. And once it does, who knows how many situations just like it could be avoided. With a tragedy like that, no wonder he's defending it. He's sure as hell not in it for the cash. Not for reputation, either. The guy's just doing what he thinks needs to be done. I suppose I can understand that. Huh? You can? You think that excuses everything that monster has done? He framed Ayabe, turned a blind eye to Emi-chan's murder, left Okubo-kun out in the cold. All because this fucking drug needs to get fast-tracked? How can you begin to think that's right? How? If Morita can decide what needs to be done, then so can we. I'm gonna protect every last person they've trampled. I'm gonna get revenge for Emi-chan. 
Interesting. <laughs> what is? Oh, <laughs> it's just uh, really obvious you used to be a lawyer. Used to? I've still got my badge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, play off the gambling, yeah? You lose more than you win. Yeah, whatever you say. Yagami-kun, I think it'd be best if you hold on to these files. Yuta, make sure she gets home safe, would you? Since we're close, do you mind if we drop in on salary? Oh, sure. What's up? Oh, no reason. She just likes seeing the two of us together. Uh, what now? Uh, whatever. I was gonna go fill her in on what happened tonight anyway. Why? Kido never would have ended up in Kamurocho if not for salary. And her honey trap. A honey trap? You can't be serious. <laughs> oh, if I could only be joking. Oh. Yes. Free stuff. Uh. Huh? No, I, um... Uh... Yagami-san. Didn't realize you'd be stopping by. Awfully suspicious. Just what were you two up to in here? Um, not much. Guess we should go then. Hey, how did everything go with Keto? Hold on. I want to know what you two were up to first. Well, Hoshina kun was just. Okay, 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 okay. This is all just a big misunderstanding. Or maybe not. Or maybe it is. Maybe you'll get further next time. Is it just me, or is sorry son enjoying this? Oh, yeah. I've heard. It's horrible what happened to Morita's mother. So the prosecution is all working to protect AD-9? The chief prosecutor is, at the very least. This is all my fault. I'm the one who told Morita that Yagami-kun would be there. If I had only gone to Izumita instead. Don't think like that. There's no knowing who's on what side. We can't trust anyone except ourselves. But... Um, can I say something real quick? I'm not sure I'm the best person to be defending Ayabe. Not against an enemy this powerful. What do you mean? Agreed. Hoshino-kun can't handle the pressure. It has to be you, Yagami-san. Oh, ha ha. Real funny. This isn't a joke. We're dead serious. Please, Yagami-san. We're going up against the people who murdered Emi-san. Do it for her. For Okubo-san. And for Shintani-sensei. It's time for you to show the world what you think is right. No more running. Yeah, I guess so. I'll let Genda Sensei and Ayabe san know right away. This is bound to make headlines. I can see it now. Disgraced lawyer Yagami Sensei makes his triumphant <laughs> turn. All right, do we really need the disgraced part? But, all right. If they both agree, I'll defend Ayabe. <laughs> Guess I'll need to start digging up some more evidence. Okay. Shall we? Can you stay with me until I find my taxi? Yeah, as soon as I can figure out how to open up this door. I'm a lawyer. I don't know how to operate doors.
It's usually, I was about to say, there's usually something right here. Yeah, I don't know if I need some money. I might need it. I know we're getting, this is the final chapter, obviously, so... Never hurts to have a couple bucks on me in case I need to buy some food or something. Thank you for helping me tonight, Yagami-kun. Huh? Uh, one second. It's Izumita. Now that I think about it, he left a message earlier, too. Did you listen to it? Yes, he said he wanted to talk. It sounds like he's at Majore. Majore, huh? Guess he wanted coffee instead of booze. What should we do? You don't have to do anything. Go home where you're safe. Izumita might be on their side, too. But... I'll go instead. You? Really? I'll be fine. All right. Stay safe out there. <laughs> Sorry, car. Wait, hold on, there was something back here to grab. Ooh, yes! Big money! I know, I, uh, the purple ones I know we can't sell, but I still pick them up. Let's cut through here. Idiots. Bada boom. Sorry about that. And stay down. Be wild, Wild Jackson. Excuse me, everybody. Oh, upstairs. Sorry, Mr. Kim. You expected me to come tell you good news. Well, I've got any. Oh, this is a little coffee place. Never got a chance to eat here. Yagami, what are you doing here? Did you come alone? Yeah. Good. I sent Mafi you home. I could go for a chat and a coffee, though. Sorry, not interested. What did you have to tell Mafu you? It has nothing to do with you. Oh, then how about I guess? Huh? The reason you wanted to talk to her was... Um... Probably that. You were going to tell her to join forces with Morita. What? Am I wrong? I see what you're getting at. What happened with the chief prosecutor and that Ministry of Health bureaucrat? It wasn't normal. Not normal? That's a bit of an understatement. They want to protect 89 so bad, they ignored evidence of a murder under their noses. You're working with them too, aren't you? What are you implying? Chief Prosecutor Morita is part of a conspiracy to push 89 through, no matter the cost. Do you have proof of that? 
this. I got it from Mafuyu. It's a case file detailing a domestic murder within Morita's family. Sound familiar? This is the first time hearing of it. I'll give it to you, if you have the strength to fight. Excuse me? What happens if you find out I'm telling the truth? How far will you go, Izumira? Would you be willing to bring your own boss to justice? Of course. Ask a hundred prosecutors and they'd answer the same way. Huh. Maybe you're not as bad as I thought. This incident is what gave Morita motivation to support 89. That's how I see it, at least. Or so he says with the law. This is tragic. Yeah. His sick mom strangled to death by his own brother. <sighs> Morita's doing what he thinks is right in all this. That's why he suppressed evidence earlier. Back at Shono's lab, I mean. <sighs> the mole killed countless people there. It's only natural there'd be traces left behind. Our case would be practically bulletproof if we found them. It's just, I... I can't believe you would do this. The way he acted at the lab, we have to believe he's wrapped up in this. Wouldn't you agree? Mm. Izumira! I... I guess I can't deny that. Right? But if he really is trying to protect 89... How do we stop him? What can we even do? Well... I was planning to use Aibe's trial to bring all the dark truths about 89 out into the light. That's why I chased Hamura down. Why I needed to find Shono's lab. But Ichinose and Morita crushed those leads before they really even took off. And you don't have the ammo to stop them. <sighs> it hurts to hear the truth laid out like that. But it is a relief knowing you're not on their side, believe it or not. <laughs> Not sure this is the time to be relieved. Yeah, I know. Hey. Hmm? I was wondering. You think we could get Ichinose to testify? Get him called to the stand? Under what pretense? I don't know. Maybe to explain 89? It could be anything, really. He can't say no if the prosecution requests it, right? Then, what do we do once we have him there? We corner him eloquently. Shower him with questions until he gives up. Me and you both. Oh, wait, that's your big plan? Hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. We don't have a chance of winning if we're not willing to take some risks. Okay, I'm in. I'll let you know once I've made the arrangements. That just seemed really too easy. Right? Didn't it? I feel like that was just so easy to... He's like, yeah, okay, sure, sounds good. I don't know. I, I just feel like that's all too conveniently placed. No. Oh, wait, hold on here. What's in here? Hit the bed. So basically, it's up to Izumira whether or not Ichinose shows at the trial. The question now is, how do we press Ichinose once he's there? Before we get too far, Genda-sensei and Ayabe are both on board with Yagami-san representing the defense. The lousiest lawyer ever. Back in the court. <laughs> Looks like it. Now, let's talk about our next steps. First on the agenda, though. 
What do we call Sugiura now? That's your next step? It was, uh, Terasawa, yeah? I'm fine with Sugiura. Why change it up now? Fair enough. Um, speaking of next steps, I'd like to try putting some pressure on Kido again. Maybe we could use the video Sari-san helped us get to force him into testifying for us. Good plan. Anyone else? This doesn't have anything to do with the case, but some shit's going down in the Matsugane family. We can talk about it right after this, Yagami. Roger that. What's up? Just so you know, I'm gonna go talk to Okubo soon. He still thinks Emi-chan's family hates him for what happened. I need him to know that's not true. If that's okay with you. Sure, I'm fine with it. Oh, alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like that's a great place to pause it. We'll continue in the next episode and knock out these three things. So thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you can, give the video a like. It does help us out quite a bit. Also, check out the channel because we have tons of videos going on over there. Until next time, you guys, stay frosty.